Praise the Lord. This is Brother Harlan Parrott. This is the 13th day of September 2007. Continuing our study today on some of the things that demons can cause to human beings. We've studied them causing darkness and oppression, doubt and belief. They cause double-mindedness, divisions, and all types of sins and evils. Today we're going to study the another cause that they cause called deadness and weakness. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot unto God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? They cause delay and compromise. Acts chapter 24, verse 25. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Acts 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. They cause divisions and strife. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1 through 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. They make war on saints. The greatest and most important work of Satan now among men is to counterfeit the doctrines and experiences of God as revealed in scriptures, in order to deceive saints, men are commanded to prove and to test all doctrines and experiences in the supernatural realm to see if they are of God or of Satan. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man." For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ? Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It is certain that every religion, doctrine, and experience among men cannot be of God, so we must judge them by the plain written word of God. The greatest danger for spiritual believers is to accept anything and everything in the realm of the supernatural as being from God. Such believers have consecrated themselves to yield to the Holy Spirit and the leading of God, and they think that they cannot be deceived and be led by evil spirits through counterfeit doctrines and leadings. But the fact that the believer is a child of God does not stop the devil from trying in every conceivable way to imitate God to the believer. In fact, believers are all the ones he can concentrate upon and wars against. Paul said, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is found in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15. This makes it clear that counterfeits of Satan will be substitutes of truth and as near to the light and truth as possible in order to deceive seekers after truth. So it will pay everyone to be careful about what he believes and what supernatural power he yields to. There are definite ways outlined in the scripture by which one can detect what kind of spirit is seeking control of him. In brief, we may mention a few general principles that one can use to detect good and evil spirits and their operations and doctrines. Number one, any doctrine that denies or in any way causes doubt and unbelief concerning anything taught in Scripture is from demons. Any religion that denies the inspiration of the Bible, the reality of God as a person, the divine sonship of Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God, the virgin birth, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ, the divinity of Christ and his miraculous power and supernatural ministry, the death, burial, bodily resurrection, and the bodily manifestation of Christ after his resurrection, the bodily ascension to heaven and coming again of Jesus Christ to set up a kingdom in the world forever, the reality and power of the Holy Spirit and His ministry among men to convict of sin, to create men in Christ, and to carry on the work of God among men, the reality of Christian experiences as the new birth, cleansing from sin, living free from sin, divine healing, the Spirit baptism, gifts of the Spirit, miracles and signs following believers, answers to prayer, fulfillment of the promises in getting health, happiness, prosperity, and the numerous other experiences of the New Testament, the reality of Satan, demons, sickness, sin, and the fall of man, the creation of all things by God, the free moral agency of men, the universality of sin, and the depravity of man, the necessity of repentance and the born-again experience, the penalty of sin as being eternal loss of the soul, the necessity of the atonement, the reality of heaven and eternal hell, the resurrection and judgment of all men, and the immortality of the soul. Any religion that teaches contrary to these and all other fundamental doctrines of the scriptures is of the devil and is for the purpose of causing the soul to be damned in eternal hell. Number two, any power, influence, or doctrine that causes one to become passive inactive, submissive, and unresisting to all workings of the supernatural spirits which seek to control the life contrary to Scripture is not of God. God's Spirit always and without exception wants free and active choice in the surrender of the will as it gets light according to the Scriptures. God seeks intelligent action while demons demand the surrender of the will without active choice to do as one in intelligently sees fit to do according to the Bible. They demand passivity passivity on the part of their victims. They demand that man be a mere machine and automation and that the he be non active in submissiveness 
to them. They seek with absolute and compulsory action through men. When anyone asserts that the Spirit demands of them that they do something and is forcing him to do it, this is a sure sign that he is being moved by the wrong spirit. Demons work to get men to act quickly and unintelligently and to do acts regardless of the outcome of the cause of Christ and lost souls. The spirits of Christians are always subject to them, and anything that demands that the personal spirit be not under the individual's personal control is the wrong spirit. 1 Corinthians 14.32 And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The Holy Spirit never causes people to act indecently and disorderly or to call attention to self in public services, things which they never would do in private. The causes of passivity among believers may be summed up thus. They have a determination to obey the supernatural, thinking that surrender is a guarantee against demon operation. Entrance into the spiritual realm opens to them supernatural communications, which in turn leads them to believe that all supernatural influences and spirits must be God. The desire to be wholly surrendered to God and to be submissive to Him in all things leads them to submit subdue and make all things subject to the supernatural. Their ignorance of supernatural leadings and guidance and ignorance of the scriptures and wrong interpretation of them give demons ground for operation. And yielding to supernatural manifestations and impressions, they are in the majority of cases not able to detect the true source of supernatural manifestations, so they often yield to the wrong spirit. One must realize that ignorance is no guarantee against the working of evil spirits. In fact, this is one of the chief means by which they try to control man. If they can get anyone to accept their suggestions, doctrines, ideas, and leadings, and guidance in the least degree, they will be satisfied with that much ground gained, but they will be tireless in activity to gain more ground. Paul warned believers not to, and as in Ephesians 3.27 neither give place to the devil, and to put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, and to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. This is found in Ephesians six, ten through eighteen. When a person becomes contentious over doctrines not plainly stated in Scripture and that are contrary to Scripture, he is a victim of demon possession and demon teaching. A person under the control of the Holy Spirit will be gentle, humble, honest, and open-minded to truth. He will be eager to accept as truth what is shown him to be plainly written in the Word of God. He will not be stubborn to hold on to personal ideas or to prove that he is right in total disregard of what the Bible says. He will be ready and willing to accept new truth and to walk in the light as he receives it. 1 John 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Number 4. When one is born again and becomes a spiritual person, he enters into the realm of the supernatural and spiritual, and he should begin a study of the Bible to see what it teaches and how he should walk and how to conduct spiritual warfare. If he neglects to be on guard and fails to be aggressive against satanic powers, he is liable to be defeated by them. There is not one thing to be afraid of if one lives a conscientious Christian life by reading the Bible and praying daily and by walking and living in the Spirit according to light received by the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 13. There is therefore now no con condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Galatians 5, verse 16 through 26. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. One should get up every morning and pray and have faith in God's help through the day. He should always meditate on the Scriptures and refuse to do one thing contrary to the known will of God as he sees the Bible, and there will be no danger of being deceived. The true manifestation of the Holy Spirit will be earmarked by A, a Christ-like spirit of love, patience, and faith in God, B, soberness and keenness of spirit vision, C, deep humility of heart and meekness of spirit with a lion-like courage against sin, sickness, poverty, disease, discouragement, failure, and every other thing that could cause defeat in the Christian life, D, absolute clearness of the mental faculties and intelligent action to carry out Bible instructions concerning known duty and personal life as a Christian, and E, freedom from all fault-finding, surmising, whispering, or slander to anyone, and freedom from all the works of the flesh that are listed in the following scriptures. Mark chapter 7, verse 19 through 21. Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers. Romans chapter 1, verse 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, 
proud bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if the lack of any condemning and judging spirit, or seeking to hurt anyone by thought, word, or deed, all divine leadings will be for the edification and betterment of all concerned, and will be in accord with, with the golden rule, which is Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And G, freedom from any ignorance concerning the divine will at the moment, when one is moved upon to act quickly and urgently without knowing whether the act will glorify God or not, it will be best to wait and pray until it is clear beyond all doubt that God wants such action. If it is God moving one to do something, it will not insult him to try the spirit and intelligently judge whether the proposed act is biblical or not. For God commands this kind of judgment on our part before we act. If it is God, one can wait until he is assured by God in several ways before he acts, like Gideon of old who sought two impossible signs before he knew the will of God him for himself. However, one must not be guided entirely by the so-called fleeces. He must judge all fleeces by the word of God and wait until he knows it is God asking him to do something. All acts of God will be primarily for the liberation of men from sin, for the deliverance of the body from pain, sickness, and want, or for some other good things that someone needs to have done for him. All work of the devil tends to blind, cause sin, discouragement, lack of faith, and failure in life. Just as the devil requires lies and the minds of men to hold them in bondage, so God requires truth in the mind for the true working of the Holy Spirit. Demons will cause one to be hindered in every conceivable way from getting truth that will set one free from their hold on the life. With all these things in mind, saints must beware of neglecting those things that will cause enlightenment in spiritual warfare or falling an easy prey to criticism of others or pressing cares of life which will keep them occupied from taking time to wage a successful spiritual warfare or forgetting easily those things that will give victory over sin and Satan of neglecting prayer and reading the Bible to be spiritually prayed up and alert against the foe of being discouraged when the conflict for the moment seems to be going against them or failing to use the authority of Christ through the, his precious blood, his name, and the Holy Spirit against evil powers, of failure to call upon God and resist the devil in special conflicts, or of failure to do the whole will of God intelligently as it becomes known 
as they walk in the light of the word of God. 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Man is deceived when he thinks that sin will not have any effect upon him, that he will inherit the kingdom of God regardless of sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, that he will not reap what he sows. This is another deception of the devil. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. That it is not necessary to obey the Bible, another deception of Satan. James 1 verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James 2 verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. That he cannot be deceived. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 through 13. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 through 15. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? I robbed other churches, taking wages of them, to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so will I keep myself. As the truth in Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing that if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Therefore it is no great thing 
if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 9. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane in old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. Man must be on his guard concerning doctrine experience in every phase of the Christian life. He must learn not to believe anything unless it is definitely stated in Scripture. It matters not if it comes from the best ministers in the land. It should be judged by what the Bible says before it is accepted as truth. He must learn to guard against every impression, revelation, or whatever it might be, whether it comes from dreams, visions, preaching, or even while in prayer. The fact of the possibility of being deceived should keep everyone on guard and open to test everything by the Bible. Many latter-day delusions can be traced back to a crisis in the life of the founders of the new religion who wanted truth and more of God. They threw themselves open to the supernatural and accepted demon doctrines and powers instead of judging what they received by the Bible. No man should blindly obey any spirit or believe any doctrine. Many of these leaders were honest to begin with and may be somewhat honest now. But honesty is no guarantee against the working of the devil. Satan has no principles of righteousness and he will take advantage of in any honest heart if permitted as quickly as of a dishonest one. Until one gets acquainted with the scriptures and the spiritual realm into which he enters in finding God, he should walk very carefully in prayer and read the Bible for more truth to obey. He must not permit anything to sidetrack him. If he fails and if he falls, he must get up and rededicate himself to God and go on more aggressively against his foe than ever before. During the period of learning to distinguish truth from error, very few can guarantee that they are obeying God and God only in every detail because there are many factors likely to intervene, such as the mind, spirit, the will, desires, imaginations, imperfect knowledge, and submissiveness, false ideas and personal feelings, as well as numerous deception, uh, intrusions of evil spirits, as well as numerous deceptive intrusions of evil spirits. The beginner must learn to discern false spirits as well as false doctrines. The knowledge of truth is the first essential in warfare on demons and error. 
and this is what you are getting in these lessons. So do not permit anything under the sun to stop you from completing the whole series of all the plan and doctrines of God as you get to know truth, accept it and be thankful for it, and above all, conform to it, and your life will become rich in knowledge and experiences in the things of God. God wants you to know that he answers prayer and fulfills his promises to everyone that will have faith. He wants you to be healthy and prosperous, so take hold of the promises and pray in faith daily until you get what you want. Do not be discouraged if you do not get everything in a few days. The conditions of sin and unbelief in you before you gave your heart to God to be born again was not brought about in a few days, and you faithfully continued for years creating such a condition and take the same dogged and patient attitude in destroying doubt and unbelief and in having faith in God and his word, and he will answer prayer and give you what you ask. You must be eager for more knowledge. Seek it earnestly, fervently, prayerfully, and with a sincere desire to know it and obey it as light is given. Don't permit one doubt to assail. You kill all the doubt, refuse to live in unbelief and defeat. This is not your lot in life. You are a child of God since you have been born again. If you have done what we taught you in the last two lessons, if you have done this, do it again and again. Deliverance from believing lies must be by believing truth. Nothing can remove a lie but the truth. Nothing can give you complete victory over evil but God through the precious blood of Christ. Number seven, the character of Satan. The names of Satan in point two above uh, subheading 11 and above and his, his low degrading tactics and enmity manifested in innumerable ways as seen in the work is point, in point six above reveal his true character. Number one, he is the enemy of all good and accuser of God and man. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Matthew thirteen twenty eight. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Revelation 12, verse 9 through 12. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He is the father of lies, John eight forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, 
and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of him. Satan's a murderer. John eight forty four. also we just read. He is a sore of discord. Matthew thirteen thirty nine. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. He's an adversary. First Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Satan was the first sinner, the first rebel, and the first to consecrate himself to the self-gratification and to wage war against all society. We find this in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 7 through 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan is cunning. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians 11, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Ephesians 6, verse 11 and 12. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan is wicked. Matthew 13, verses 19 through 38. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. 
He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? For whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Without then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs. And becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. All these things, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came in unto him, saying, And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. John eight forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. 1 John 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Satan is malignant. Luke 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 and 9. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He's cowardly. James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He is a tempter. Matthew 4, verse 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, 
He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus saith unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The devil's a thief. John 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Satan is, is without principle in taking advantage of men in their weak moments. We saw this in Matthew 4, verse 1 through 11, where he tempted Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 22, verse 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In tempting men after great success, John chapter 6, verse 15, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. In suggesting the use of right things in a wrong way, and at a wrong time, as we see this, where he tried to tempt Jesus Christ to make stones into bread and to jump off the pinnacle of the temple and tempted him to take all the kingdoms of the world and come fall down and worship the devil in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Satan slanders God to man and to God. We see this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. We see this in Job chapter 1, verse 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face and the lord said unto satan behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not forth thine hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord and also in job chapter 2 verse 1 through 7 again there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Satan can appear as an angel of light to deceive. 2 Corinthians 11:14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan deludes his followers as to their end. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8 through 12. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 7 through 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. He is presumptuous. We see this in Job chapter 1, verse 6 through 12, and 2, verse 1 through 7, we just read. He's proud. Ezekiel 28, verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 1 Timothy 3, verse 6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Satan is deceitful. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. He's fierce and cruel. Luke eight twenty nine. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and with fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Luke nine verse thirty nine. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth again and bruising him hardly departed from him. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Satan is aggressive. Ephesians 4, verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He has never been known to be merciful, good, loving, and kind, and gentle, and pitiful, and patient, or to have any of the graces of God since he became the enemy of God and man. He is compared to a fowler. Psalm 91, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He is compared to fowls. Matthew 13, verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Matthew thirteen nineteen. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. He is compared to a wolf. John 10, verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. He is a destroyer. We see this in also in John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. He is compared to a roaring lion. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He's compared to a serpent. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. He's compared to a dragon. Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 through 12. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had the place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Satan is called other things in Scripture that prove his mean and unprincipled disposition. In spite of all this, men seeming in the intelligent men would not keep company with any other thief, murderer, liar, enemy, and wicked person will love and court his company and his favor, knowing all the time that he is committed to the damnation of their souls and of the souls of all their beloved ones. Number eight, methods of Satan. He uses every conceivable method and means to keep men from God and in subjection to himself. If he fails to do this, he tries to kill the believer's testimony and ruin his influence for God. If one falls... He tries to cause him to commit suicide or stay fallen. He tries to get others in a lukewarm condition and make them 
live there so that God will cut them off in the end. He brings in damnable heresies to lead men in rebellion against God. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 8. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth, for every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. He preaches sermons and uses all the influences possible through fallen men, fallen angels, and demons to get men to stay away from God or cause them to backslide and to live in sin. He is the author of all false religions and never discourages men in following them, for he knows that this is one way that is sure to damn their souls. He tries to cause men to end their lives by making them think that it is the best way out, but he hides the true fact that this will be the only, the beginning of real torment and eternal hell. He dares men to do many things that they would not do under ordinary circumstances, and men are foolish enough to think they are not brave if they do not accept his dares. He makes the young people think that they are not brave if they do not accept his dares. He makes the young people think that they are missing everything in life if they do not go into all kinds of sins that will damn their souls. He points out to them the glamour of sin and pleasure, he stirs unholy passions in them and causes them to throw away all restraints and live a life of revelry. He makes them think there is no joy in serving the Lord. This is one of the greatest errors, serving Christ and winning souls that will be thankful forever, pays the greatest dividends and affords the greatest pleasure of all existence. Young people should get right with God and taste the glories of salvation. Then they will not listen to Satan. They will not go into sin and shame. Satan preaches to the businessman that he needs to take all his time to get rich before serving the Lord, while the fact is that if any man will truly serve the Lord, he can be abundantly prosperous by God's help. He tries to get churches and their leaders to make religion a paying proposition and appeal to the rich and the influential people to make salvation easy for all, to lower the standard of the Bible on holy living, to become formal and outward in Christian worship and living, to compromise the essentials of the faith, to preach current events and have books, reviews in the pulpit instead of preaching the gospel that will save the soul, to justify sins and unholy lives of church members and to be as much like the world as is possible in order to attract the world. There is no realm which Satan does not seek to control, and he will never be satisfied until as many of his dupes as possible are in eternal hell, and God is defeated in blessing all men everywhere with all good things of life. He has greatly succeeded in getting men in all walks of life to give up Christ and the Bible by the excuse that there are so many religions that one cannot tell what to do, or which one is right. Number nine, God's purpose in allowing Satan to continue. God has several purposes, as can be seen by the following points. Number one, to develop character and faith in the believer. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man 
that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7 through 13. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 through 9. Wherefore are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Jude chapter 1 verses 20 through 24. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy.